Well, I was greeted this morning by, isn't this a beautiful, sunshiny day? <laughs> and it is. Because I was reminded the sun's still shining, right? And the Lord has given us this good rain underneath in order that everything will grow and bloom in the spring. So it is a sunshiny day. Every day with Jesus is a, is a day of his light, his blessing, and his presence. We do welcome you as we come together to worship this morning. Uh, again, I remind you, if you're with us for the first time, you're not visitors. You're just part of the family we haven't met yet. And we want you to know we're glad to have you as we worship, that you might multiply our, our worship to our Lord and to our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's stand together as we sing. Can we do that? All right. Page 98. song prone to wander lord i feel it prone to lead the god i love here's my heart lord take and seal it isn't that the good news that when our heart wanders god will seal our heart and make sure we see the courts that are above let's bow our heads and thank god for that our heavenly father lord we bow before you this morning and acknowledge that that you are God above all gods. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are our creator and our maker. You are all that we are, and in you we move and have our being. And Father, I want to thank you for your grace. Lord, that, that if it were not for grace, we would be without hope. We could have no life. But because of your grace and your mercy that you have so freely given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, how wonderful it is that we can praise your name and, and call you our Father because of that gift. So, Father, this morning, may you be praised in all that we say and all that we do. May your name be lifted up. And, Lord, may your word be your word, not ours. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Good morning. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, regarding the rain, it may be a little cold and dreary outside, but uh, 
we're grateful that you've chosen to come and spend your Sunday with us today because uh, not only is it a chance to glorify our God for all the blessings that he's truly showered on all of us, but uh, gives us an opportunity to be warmed by the love of this congregation. And so we'd like to I'd like to just second that how grateful we are to see the, the visiting faces today. So getting on to our time of announcements, I've been asked to call on Annie Dodd. Good morning. Um, we've been collecting a uh, can of food for feeding green. There's a, a couple of boxes out there. It was supposed to be soup for Super Bowl Sunday, um, but we are going to collect for the rest of the month. So, and it doesn't have to be soup. It can be other canned goods as well. So, um, please bring it. Maybe the next couple of Sundays, and and let's try to get as much food to help feeding green as we possibly can. Um, also, because it's Valentine's Day, we have roses for our ladies and so there's a, a bucket of roses that um, our gentlemen are going to hand out to all of their women as you leave because if we gave it to you right now then the stems would dry up so when you go home though please cut a couple inches off the stems before you put it in the water and it'll help to keep that rose fresh <laughs> okay but happy valentine's day from rockersville baptist church All right, so I, I'm following my wife there. Uh, we just had another announcement. I thought it was quicker to just knock these out. Um, in your bulletin, the <clears throat> excuse me, under the announcements, the big paragraph in the center there is basically um, announcing that next Sunday after worship service, we're going to have our annual review of the church's child protection policy. Um, it's ba for those of you that have done it before that did it last year, uh, it's basically just going through it, making sure there aren't any questions and making sure everybody's clear about it. But it is part of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the church's policy that everybody does that every year. If you work with children in any capacity or if you have plans to do that, uh, we, we need you to, uh, to stick around after worship next week. It probably won't be long. I'd say 15, 20 minutes tops. Uh, so, but that's happening next week. Okay. If you have questions or if you haven't been through the training before, uh, please see me or Anna, and we can make sure we get you a copy of the child protection policy, just maybe for you to go over it uh, beforehand. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Doug. Oh, let's see here. Uh, they've covered two of the main topics that I wanted to cover, so that takes some pressure off of me. And uh, I want to point out uh, there will be a called business meeting uh, this coming Thursday, February the 16th at uh, 7 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. There's uh, a number of items we need to discuss, but I will let you know one of the main topics is going to be uh, we need to have some discussion on uh, the possibility of our future Fellowship Hall uh, addition so that's an important one and uh, we definitely would appreciate the input and anybody that has any member that has an interest in it we very much like you to be in attendance also the uh, the meal after the Sunday first Sunday meal after church last week uh, was a Valentine's theme and uh, the youth collected for this because of the by helping out with the serving they collected a grand total of $840.31. So, so we just, we want to praise God that uh, people were so generous, which this ch church has def definitely got a giving spirit. So that was phenomenal. And, uh, and we appreciate everybody that helped and we appreciate everybody that provided food. So. And one more mention, uh, there, I'm going to leave a few items that you can read for yourself, but the last mention is the uh, ladies' prayer advance uh, be running from March the 23rd through the 25th in Roanoke, and there will be more details in the coming weeks. Yes, sir.
No, okay. All right. Does anybody have any additional announcements that we should cover now? Oh, yes, Kendra. Did children have an announcement? Did you? Is that children's Sunday school? Yes. They have an announcement. Oh, yes, certainly. Come on up, gentlemen. So um, we would want um, all the children that uh, helped serve uh, last Sunday to come up right now if they want to. But if you don't want to, you don't have to come up. <laughs> but um, so 2 Corinthians uh, 9, 6 through 7 says, for God loves a cheerful giver. And um, we would like um, the youth and children of the church would like to thank the church for the generous offerings, offerings through the tips uh, last week. Thank you so much. We raised a grand total of $840.31 for Hope for Appalachia. Thank you so much. Please, Mr. Matt and Mr. Bill, come up and receive this check for you, for your trip. Sorry about that, man. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. I would have kept that to myself if I'd have known it was going to happen. So, anyway, uh, any additional announcements? All right, now we'll uh, turn our attention to prayer requests. Uh, you'll see the list in your bulletin, and it's uh, quite an extensive list, and we won't read all the names, but I ask that you please look this over and be in prayer for these folks uh, throughout the week. But uh, a couple of mentions. Uh, we want to remember the Charles Jr. Oots family. Uh, he is in ICU presently at Martha Jefferson. He's having some uh, heart issues, so be in prayer for that. Also, Kyle's brother-in-law, uh, who has led our uh, revival services, Terry St. John, he's got some very serious health concerns going on, so we would like to Keep he and he and his wife and their family in prayer, and uh, ask that God will uh, will will first and foremost that God's will be done. But uh, we ask for a healing for uh, Mr. St. John. And then also, uh, I spoke yesterday morning, actually Friday morning, to uh, Linda Moore. She's our local florist, and. Haven't spoken to her in a while. I'm sure a lot of you folks know her, but uh, apparently her family's had a terrible uh, 2022. Uh, I think she mentioned that there were seven or eight deaths in that family within a three or four month time span. And uh, plus uh, the husband, Mr. Morris, he's got some back surgery coming up. So just keep them in your prayers. Anybody else? Yes, Mary. I've got a phrase. Oh. Okay. So, uh, praise that I pulled from the accident. Okay. You, you graduated. You got your good health degree. Okay. <laughs> yes, Roy. Okay. Donna, did you have your hand raised? Yes. I just want to thank the church for praying for my daughter-in-law, Lauren. She's always had a follow-up with her oncologist, and they had to care for her cancer, too. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? It's like what he said. Uh, <laughs> yes, Rodney. That's awful. 
I ask that you keep that family in prayer as well. Anyone else? All right, if not, if you'll uh, join us for this morning's scripture reading, we'll be uh, looking to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 17. I'll give you a moment to uh, get that looked up. Again, that's Romans 10, 9 through 17. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Going on to verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us go now for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this, this fine day grateful that you've brought us to your house and father it's evidence by the by the new faces in this congregation this morning that there are those who have heard your calling and they have sent and they've accepted that call and they've gone out and they've invited and folks uh, i mean father i'm sorry excuse me father thank you so much that for your word, for your word, when we speak up, when we tell others about you, your word has the power to save. And Father, it is the blood of your Son, our, our Savior Jesus Christ, that uh, washes us of our sins. And Father, that is a great and wonderful news. And help us never to keep that to ourselves. Help us to share it with all that we can. And Father, we thank you for the chance to come in your home, come in your house, give our praise to you, and as for the people on our prayer list, Father, we have those that are suffering, that are in need of uh, physical healing, we have those with broken hearts, downcast spirits, and Father, we know that your love, your word, and we, as your messengers, we have the power to help people in all circumstance. And Father, this country, this, this population is in dire need of a healing, of a renewing that only your word can, can possibly present. And Father, we thank you for that opportunity to share in the good news that is you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'll notice, Wilbur's not here this morning. I'm not Wilbur, okay? Uh, I'm the substitute. That, you know what a substitute is? Well, up in the hills of West Virginia, this preacher, young preacher one time was called on at the last minute to do the annual sermon for the association and uh, because the guy who was supposed to do it wasn't there. So he told everybody, he said, well, he said, I'm the substitute. He said, that, you know what that means? He said, that broken window over there, we've got that piece of cardboard in it. That cardboard is a substitute for glass. He said, I'm, I'm a substitute. He said, but I'll do my best to be a real pain. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so, so this morning, you know, we'll do our best to be a real pain, okay? Now, I do have one thing I want to say before this. And some of you know, some of you don't. 
But you've noticed from time to time, Mary Ann's not with us. My wife. It's not because she doesn't want to be. But she has some carryover issues from cancer and cancer treatment. And like this morning, she got up, showered, ready to come, and had issues and not able to come. So I just want you to know that. It's not because she don't want to be here, you know. Uh, but sometimes she's just unable to be here. So kind of keep her in your prayers. So, now like I said, I'm substituting for Wilbur, okay? I don't know how to do this, all right? Okay. Uh, so this morning, you, you're going to have to sing by hillbilly music, okay? Now here it is. We don't sing by note and measure. We sing by letter. We just stand up and let her fly, okay? And that's how I want you to sing this morning. You know, just, just sing from a glad heart. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star, right? So, Barbara, feel free to pep it up as much as you want to. We'll keep up with you, all right? Let's stand as we sing. weren't singing okay and some of you were kind of mumbling because you're scared to death somebody's going to hear you sing a bad note right well let me tell you how to deal with that if you hit a bad note you know you've hit a bad note just look over at your neighbor and go like that and everybody think it's him instead of you all right let's try it okay he is all my Brother Matt, would you please?
We are again going to be in the third chapter of the book of John. Maybe it's a verse of scripture you've heard before. It would be verses 16 through 19. I heard the story of a preacher who uh, had preached on John 3.16 for a year in a row, every Sunday. And one of his deacons came to him and said, Pastor, said, uh, you know, we're kind of in a rut here. He said, why have you preached the same text for a year? He said, because you must be born again. Isn't that, pretty, isn't that pretty obvious? Well, last week we kind of talked about two births, a physical birth and a spiritual birth. But today, I want to tell you a true love story. You know, probably the word love will be used more this week in America than the rest of the year put together, right? Right? However, much of what the world calls love is nothing more than lust, right? Love is more than an emotion. It's an attitude of the heart. You choose to love. Love is not earned. Love is not deserved. Love is in spite of, not because of. We like someone because of what they do. We love someone in spite of what they may do. That's why God is love. That's why it says God so loved the world. If he just said God liked the world, we would wonder why. And even when we say God loved the world, we wonder why. Because it's irrational. But he loves the world because he's God. So let's read these verses together. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So I want us first of all to look at the giver of the gift. I know we say God, right? But God has almost lost its power in today's society, the name God. Because we use the name God for everything. Too often it's used as a byword or curse word. You know, the name of God is no longer holy as it should be. The, the Israelites were afraid to use the name of God lest they, lest they use it wrongly and profane his name. We have a trouble of even recognizing the holiness of the name of God. Now the children of Israel, they had several names for God. Moses is getting ready to go to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. God has called him, and God has sent him and told him to go. And Moses says, by what name can I tell them you have sent me? After all, they were in the land of Egypt, and there was a lot of names of their gods. They had different gods that they worshipped, and they all had a name. And Moses says, okay, Father God, God, you're talking to me from that burning bush. I want to be able to tell the people your name. And God said, my name is I am that I am. I am that I am. It's kind of wrapped up in the name Jehovah. The Holy One. The one who always has been and always will be. 
the God who is the beginning of all things, but also the conclusion of all things. The God who is all truth. I am truth. I am the way, because I am God, what I say is true, and there's no contradiction. My word is absolute. Now, we humans have trouble with that. Because, you know, we, we are of uncertain words. We don't agree all the time, right? But the truth is, there is no discussion with God. I am what I say, and what I say is. You know, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, there's your truth and my truth and somebody else's truth. And especially when it comes to the Word of God, people say, well, I see this, and you see this, and we're both right. No. Let me, let me explain something to you right now. If you and I disagree about what God says, there's only one possibility. And that is, God's Word is true. Now, you may be right, and I may be wrong. Okay. Or I may be right, and you're wrong. But you and I cannot both be right. God's Word is concrete. It's settled forever in heaven. And what He says is absolute. Because He is the I Am. He is, I am, I was trying to, God Almighty there is nothing beyond the power of God. Okay? God can do whatever God chooses to do. God is absolute in His power. He spoke the world into existence. He spoke the Son into existence. He spoke us into existence. You look at all the mighty things of this earth, and none of it is possible apart from God. All, pain, all power is indeed God. He is God Almighty, but He's also, I am the Lord. And that's really what He's telling Pharaoh, I'm the Lord. Do you know what the Lord is? The Lord is the owner of another person. Not the boss of another person. Not just the king of another person. But the Lord is the owner of another person. That is, that person is in his control. Understand that God is Lord of all the universe. You are his. You belong to Him. All that we have belongs to Him. He allows us to use it as a generous Lord, but it is He who gives strength to get wealth. It all belongs to Him. You know, everybody talks about Him owning the cattle on a thousand hills. Guess what? He owns the hills too. And he owns all the hills and all the cattle. It is his. Oh, we temporarily occupy a part of it. But I'll guarantee you someday you're going to give it up. You're not going to take it with you. It'll go back to the owner who is God. He is the God most high. That means he is the one only who is worthy of worship. Now, there's many who claim to be God, but He is the one who is worthy to be worshipped. He could very well say, I am love. I am love. The love of God is beyond our comprehension and our amazement. But love has two aspects. Love is directed to righteousness. God loves righteousness, right? 
And God loves his people. And since he loves his people and he loves righteous, he wants his people to be righteous. God loves righteousness, but he hates iniquity. But he's still God. You see, you can't love without hate. If there's no hate, there's no love. You have to have the right to accept or reject in order to properly love. That's the difference between us and angels. Angels are created beings to serve God. We're created beings to love God. And since he were created us to love God, we have the ability to not love God. It's a choice. It's from inside. So God exhibits his love not only in giving of benefits to his children and to his creation, but he also shows his love in judging the iniquity. Now, understand, when you read the Bible, when you read how he dealt with Israel from time to time, you find out it was tough love. You know, how does God love a people and allow them to be taken into captivity for hundreds of years? How does God love humanity and allow certain things to happen in this earth? Well, remember, he is a just God who demands justice, and therefore he hates the iniquity of his creation, and he has the power to judge that iniquity. Because of that, we have an ultimate decision to make. An ultimate decision that is based upon eternity. You know, we are temporarily on this earth preparing for eternity. And eternity is forever. And so, one day, we face God. We have either accepted his salvation, his plan of redemption, or we've rejected it. Therefore, he that believeth is not condemned. He didn't say we're perfect, but we're not condemned. You see, perishing and dying is two different things. We, we think about eternal life. God gives us eternal life, and we think about, well, we're going to live forever, and we are. But when it speaks of perishing, it's speaking beyond death in this world, but it's speaking of eternally being separated from the presence of God. That's eternal death. That's perishing. And so, he that believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The contrast is also true. He that believeth not is condemned to perish already because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. So, we have God who is Lord. He is everlasting God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the beginning. He is the ending. You go beyond the beginning, beyond God, you're going too far. Come back. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You can also say, in the end of earth, it will be God who calls its elimination. So, let me just break here for a moment and say to you this. We have a lot of fear today about the earth being destroyed. You know, we might cut too many trees or, you know, use too many plastic bags or whatever. Have a gas stove. Let me tell you something. God started this earth. God will conclude this earth on his time and in his place. Now, the Bible does say this earth will burn up, but Al Gore doesn't hold the match, okay? God's in charge, and I can tell you exactly how long this earth will last, exactly. It will last until God says it's time. That's him. So, this great God that I've talked about so far it says that he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, I want you to think about who the world is. 
the world is, is you and me. Okay? The world is that humanity that he created through Adam that was designed uniquely from all other creation. He breathed to him the breath of life and he made him in his own likeness, in his own image. Now understand, there's other beautiful things in this world. There are cute little puppies and cute kittens and beautiful deer and antelope and so forth. But there's only one creature that is made in the image and the likeness of God, and that's man. He made us in his likeness, in his image. And he provided the world for man. You know, he said to Adam, he said, everything here is for you. The only thing is, don't take that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because the day you do, you've introduced death. And, well, you know, Adam, he done what God told him not to do, and death come along. But we are sons of Adam. Now, what was involved in Adam's taking of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? One simple word. Rebellion. You know, we all have a rebellious nature, right? If you want a, a four-year-old child to do something, if, if it's essential they do it, let me tell you how to get them to do it. Tell them no. <laughs> right? Well, let me say this to you. We, as sons of Adam, adults, God says do, and we say no. That's our nature. God says don't, and we do. Because we have a rebellious heart. We are created in flesh. Now, this is where it gets real amazing. You would agree with me, I, I believe, this whole vast humanity has done anything but honor God through all of creation, right? I mean, we broke his heart time after time after time. We read about Israel, and many times that they forget who God is and serve and worship other gods. And we look at them and say, oh, those bad people. But then if we look at ourselves, we find out we serve self just as much as they did. Number one. Look at number one. You know, America's got to be one of the weirdest nations ever lived. Because we have thousands of books written on how to be proud. And God says... He hates a proud heart. But he loved us anyway. Remember what I said about love? It's in spite of. So I want you to understand when I say that God loves me, it's in spite of who I am. When I say to you with full authority, God loves you, it's in spite of you. It's not because of. He just loves you because he loves you. I think we generally reflect that as parents. We love our children. They don't always obey us. They don't always do the right thing. They break our heart. We love them anyway. We love them anyway. God loves you and God loves me this is a so love you know uh, everybody talks about different kinds of love the four love languages and so forth I'm interested in the so love for God so loved the world do, do you know what so love is so love is a love that motivates you to do something now, we can stand up all day long and say we love one another. But if we don't do anything in that direction, we've just said words. means nothing. It's not enough to just say, I love. But so love produces action. Now, bear with me. I know we don't live in a perfect world. But think about the so love of a young man who is marrying 
the love of his life. It's so love. He loves her so he will spend more than he has or he ought to to buy a little shiny ring to put on her finger. That shiny ring does absolutely nothing. Right? It does nothing. You, you don't use it to cook with. You don't use it to clean house with. You, it's just there as a glory gift because he so loved you that he was willing to do more than what he could afford. He's willing to marry her and in the eyes of God promise to provide for her all of her life. When she's well, when she's sick. Good times and bad times. Happy times, sad times. He so loved her, he's willing to do that. Now think about the so love of a wife. She loves that man so much, she will pledge her life to him <coughs> through sickness and in health. Take care of us big babies. You know, she loves him enough to bear his name. That's so love. A mother loves a child so much that she's willing to endure the pangs of birth for that child. She's willing to clean up the messes and change the diapers and listen to the crying and put up with the two-year-old rebellion and the teenage heartbreak because she loves that child so love, so love. God so loved you, he gave the only thing that could bankrupt heaven, his beloved son. What would you give your son for? What would you give your own flesh for? What would you do for another person greater than give yourself and give your son? God still loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He gave him to be clothed in like flesh as a man. To experience the humiliation of human flesh. To come into this world not as a king, not as a mighty man, but a babe in a manger. Under the authority of peasants. To allow that son to be humiliated all of his time upon this earth. To allow his son to be looked upon as being illegitimate by many. A fraud by many more. He calls himself God. But he gave his son. And the son so loved you that he gave himself. The gift that God gave in giving his son as a son who loved you enough to take all of your sin, all your shame, all your failures, all your rebellion against God, and put it upon his back and go to the cross and allow his blood to be shed instead of your blood. To pay the debt of sin cost blood. And he gave his blood for you. But remember, he is I am, the Almighty. And I want you to understand that blood is powerful enough to cleanse us from all sin. All sin. There is not a drop of sin in this world that the power of God cannot cure, take care of. 
you know, everybody tries to find out the unpardonable sin. And they'll say, well, it's, some will say it's murder. Some will say it's suicide. Some will say it's this, that, or whatever. I want to tell you what the unpardonable sin is, to reject the gift of God's Son. To reject him who gave his all for you. That's the great sin. Because there is no forgiveness of that. What did he say? He that believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. So God so loved the world. He gave his only son, that whoso believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, we've come to that point that he died for us, that it is God who gave his son for us. Well, how do we get it? How are we saved? And the Word's got all kinds of ways to do it. Some people feel like, well, you know, if you, if you cry long enough, you know, if you're just sorry enough for your sin, you'll get to heaven. I, I want you to understand, sorry, you, you can shed a sea of tears, but if that's all you do, there's no salvation. It's not in your weeping. It's not in your pledging. Now, Lord, you know, if you'll save me, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do that. Everybody, you know. God, you give me out of this situation, and I'll do this or that. Salvation doesn't come because of your bargaining. You know why? You don't have anything God wants. You have absolutely nothing God needs. All he wants is your love and your obedience. How do you get it? Believe that he is who he says he is. I am. I am the creation God. You see, the Father is creator God, right? But so is the Son. John says, all things were made by him, and without him is not anything made that was made. And if God created the heavens and the earth, can you believe that he is the creator who can make a new person out of you? Who can take a soul that is sin and dead and make it alive in Christ Jesus? Why? Because he is the creator he is the covenant-keeping God. God has never made a promise that he could break. You know why? Because he's God. He speaks and it is. How did the Son come to existence? He said, be. <laughs> be. How did the world come to existence? He spoke. And it came into existence. How did day separate from night? He spoke. By the power of his word. You ever think about all the things God created? He created the ant and the elephant. Do you know it didn't take any more effort to create the elephant than it did the ant? He just spoke. It is. He created the stars and the heavens. Why? Because it was his will. He just spoke. They're there. I know sometimes we have this idea and concept that somehow... This believing in Jesus isn't enough to get us to heaven. Folks, let me say something. If you believe that he is who he said he is, he has the power to speak and make a sinner into a saint. And he said, if you confess me before men, I confess you before the Father, which is in heaven. He's the great I am. He is the almighty God. That means there is nothing in your life that's ever been too big for God to take care of. You've never sinned a sin too big. You've made, never made such a mess of things that he can't straighten it out. He is almighty God. And he is everlasting God. You know, I, there's no exhaustion of this subject, but I, I want you to think about this for a moment. He is everlasting God. That means he's without beginning. He's without end. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He which is, which was, which is to come forevermore. forevermore. You see, there's only three days that the son was. That's when he was in the grave. 
before he is, and he still is, eternal God. So that means the promise that he makes is eternal. The most important promise that you will make in your life is marriage. And that promise is to be made how long? Till death do us part. Okay? That promise one day will be broken. One of you will die. But God's promise is without end because he never dies. He's good enough for today, tomorrow, and forever. And he is also the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts, think about this, is, is more than just the Lord of the earth. But it's the Lord of earth and heaven and all that is therein. He's the Lord of the host of angels. He's the Lord of the host of men. And because he is Lord of heaven and Lord of earth, when he says, a soul has believed in me, I put his name in the Lamb's book of life, he is the Lord of hosts who ensures heaven to be real. Heaven is real. But not only is he the Lord of hosts above and earth, but he's also the Lord of hosts of judgment and hell. Understand the God we serve made hell for the devil and his angels. It wasn't his will that any would perish. But all would come to repentance. But those who refuse are condemned already. It's not that one day God will decide whether you're going to heaven or hell and you'll be cast in hell. No. You make that decision. And you choose to believe or to reject. And to reject is to be condemned already. It's not that you'll have to one day get a sentence to go to hell. You already have the sentence passed. And hell is real. Well, so you got a choice. God loved you enough that he gave his only begotten son. If you would believe in him, you'd not perish, but have everlasting life. When I was in Alabama, I heard very often this story. It's validity. I some at least thought it was true, told it was true. But back many years ago, when the mode of transportation was primarily rail, they had built rail road crossings from Pensacola to Mobile, Alabama, and it crossed the great waterways. And when they crossed the certain waterways, they would have a drawbridge that would allow the train tracks to be folded up so the boats could go under and the train trails to be dropped so the train could go over. And in each one of those drawbridges, they had an operator whose job it was to raise the rails and let the boats go under and close them and let the train go over. The story's told about one such operator who loved his son very much and his son loved more than anything else to be with his father and so every once in a while I just go to work with him spend the day with his father and then one day he looked and here come a train passenger train approaching high rate of speed for that but then he noticed his son wasn't there, and he began to look around, and down in the gears of that drawbridge, his son was playing. And he yelled, but his son couldn't hear him because the train was coming. He couldn't go down and rescue him because if he did, that train would fall in the ocean and drown everyone on board. Now, can you imagine being faced with that? Well, 
He did what he had to do. He pulled the lever. He dropped the bridge. And in the process, crushed his son. Here's what they say. That he looked out the window. And he looked at those faces in the train window. Going about life as usual. Some asleep. Others in the dining car. Talking, communicating. Never once glanced at the operator. And they said, he spent his life saying, I gave my son, and they didn't even care. I wonder if God doesn't look down and see a world who's wrapped up in the business of life, so busy about this and that, no time to care of the gift he gave. If God does not say, I gave my son, and they don't even care. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, your words are life. Your words are power. We would have no hope beyond this veil of tears if you hadn't loved us enough. You gave your son. We'd like to talk about loving God. It's not that we love God. It's that God first loved us and gave his son Jesus for us. I can't explain that, Father. My words are too little. So I'm going to just ask you that you'd take by the power of your spirit and multiply these truths in the hearts of the people that's here this morning. May we who know you in part forgiveness of sin develop a, a, a gratitude that is greater than anything we can imagine on earth. Because your gift was greater than anything imaginable on earth. Lord, worship would not be forced. It would never be because we have to or it's the hour to. But worship to be spontaneous because we love you so much. We can't give you anything, Father, but our praise. But let us not hold back on that. Father, if there's anyone here who's never said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he is God himself who loved me enough to go to a cross and die in my place. He rose again the third day and ascended to the Father's right hand, and they're making their session for me. I want to trust him as my Savior. I, I really believe more than anything else that salvation is only in his name. Father, just speak. Move, have your way, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. You know, every time your doorbell rings, you have a choice to make. You can open or ignore it. You can say, come in or stay out. The same is true with your heart. The Bible says Jesus stands at your door and he knocks, and if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him. He said, I'm willing. I, I want to be yours. But you either say yes or you say no. As simple as that. So as we stand, as we sing, let Jesus come into your heart. So we stand and sing.
church for a moment. How long has it been since you just said to God, thank you for saving me? Thank you for your son. Thank you for your love. I'm going to ask if Barbara would just play through one time and give you time to just thank God for what he's done for you, for loving you. And if you haven't ever confessed him publicly, right now would be a great time to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I trust you, Father. I, I believe you are exactly the Son of God. I believe you died for me, that you rose again. I believe you can save me. I'm going to trust you, Father, and you alone. We invite you to come. What was that? Believing you can raise the dead. Yeah. You, you are confessing. said amen. amen what a day what a day when god came into our heart and into our life we thank you for coming for being here for worshiping with us you know uh, i always been amazed when people come to church I, you know it's just a wonderful thing and i got to tell you i was so surprised and so proud of a young man who come to church this morning when it cost him missing playing basketball in the game he's supposed to be in. And, and I tell you who it was, but I don't want to embarrass Nate. So, you, you know, <laughs> we don't want to do anything like that, all right? But, but isn't that a wonderful testimony to who God is? Amen. Thank you so much. May God bless you. May God lead you. And, you know, if you know this wonderful story, how about telling somebody else this week? Share it with them. Invite them to know your Savior. Let's bow our heads together. Brother Dave, would you dismiss us, please?